that fucking Diaz and Connor is going to make a lot of money. But the real righteous thing to do is to make sure that the belts become unified. That's what really needs to happen. Right, absolutely. Now, saying that, do you think Connor's time off uh, does the division some good, considering it provides other guys like yourselves, Kevin Lee and Justin Gagey, the opportunity to step up and make the division your own? Absolutely not. This has been my division before McNuggets even stepped in this bitch. Even when I was at Paradigm Sports Management, he signed, he signed up at 145 pounds. And the agreement was he wasn't going to come up to 155 pounds. But that raises a conflict of interest. And I'm pissed. So that bitch needs to fight me or he needs to fight the, the guy that's holding the belt. So regardless, I don't really care. The fight at hand, I'm not even looking at it. Kevin can say that he wants to fight Conor next and all this other bullshit, but I'm really looking after this fight. I'm going to grab a piece of pizza, a beer, and I'm going to enjoy myself because I work my ass off for this camp. And I'm not really worried about anybody else besides Kevin Lee right now. All right, fair enough. Uh, Kevin, the next couple of questions for you. Uh, obviously, there's a massive opportunity for you. And now, you know, while Tony has gone all five rounds before, this will be your first. Uh, Tony also showed excellent range control, was dominant in clinches, and dealt with the takedown threats in his last fight. So how do you analyze your next opponent? Uh, you know, I'm going to beat Tony Bellow with her. I mean, that, that, that's what it's about. Uh, you know, Tony, he, 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 he has, I mean, he's the man already over the hill. He's 33. You know, he, you know, he's talking about what he's going to do in the next 12 months. I mean, it, it's going to be whatever. After this fight, uh, they will really don't know my name. I mean, I said it. People are, are, are shocked. People are, you know, confused as to why I'm getting this. You know, why I'm doing this. Why I'm doing this. I said it months ago, and, I, and I'm saying it again. Uh, I, I, I feel like I'm the real, I'm the real king of all this bitch. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just 25. I'm just getting started. I keep getting better. He keeps getting worse. So it, it don't matter when you when you look at the when you look <laughs> during the open week out open workout you you gonna he's see I'm out the water with skill. He's talking shit. It ain't, yeah, it ain't no keep talking. It ain't no keep talking. I'm about to show you. I, look, 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 I, 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 I give you your chance to say what you gonna say to do your thing. The only thing you're gonna walk out on is in a fucking gurney, Kevin Lee. You're locked. You fucked yourself, brother. That's what you did. You yeah, no, messed up. You messed up by talking shit. And you wanted to bring family into it. So, you know what? I'm not a punk ass Chester. You're dealing with a real fucking Mexican now. Yeah, sure. I'm letting you, I'm letting you, you know, I'm letting you have a whole voice, but that ain't even shit. Like, you don't want to stand there and talk, so go ahead, keep doing it. Can't even hear what you're um, talking about. You need to enunciate. <laughs> um, also, Kevin, you know how the chance is. Folks saying, folks saying, listen, 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 listen. <laughs> Bottom line. Folks saying I'm talking, but at the end of the day, I done fought four times in the last four months. I'm taking this fight. Nobody I ran out of ass. Nobody else. No, you know what happens? It's this like fight. when you lose, you, know you go like you lose in the tournament bracket. You have to fight your way back. You got knocked out, and then you have to fight your fucking way back. It's cool, man. Enjoy those fucking wins that you have, man, because it's gonna end. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. I, again, but I'm still. I'm fighting. I mean, you, look. When we look at what you actually did, I mean, you fought Are a bunch of bitches. Let's not, let's not be. Let's, let's, let's be real here. You fought a bunch of bitches. RDS was hoping your ass and you bitched out in the second round. Uh, Ava was whooping your ass and you bitched out. Edson Barboza was whooping your ass he bitched out. Like, you fought a bunch of bitches that you walked down. And, and I'm telling you right now, it ain't going to happen. So, I mean, we're going to see what's up. You can be my next bitch. You wore the last outfit right, the last before, it. too. All, all right, let's do it. You fighting dudes that's already been, you know, you fought RDA, who was already coming up and knocked down. You see, he was off the juice. You know, he was already telling himself stuff like that. And he oh, speaking so, of juice, you know, are, you you know, are you off the juice? Are you off the juice? What do you say? Cool hormone fucking buffs? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, no comment, uh, huh? Fake. Uh, Kevin. Yeah, you no, know, just completing the question. You have the chance to submit yourself. As a top lightweight in the UFC now. Um, you said what? You have the chance to cement yourself as a top lightweight in the UFC. Uh, you obviously understood the value in marketing yourself as well. So what are your thoughts on being able to talk uh, to rise up the ranks along with the ability to fight inside the cage? Yeah, I mean, that's what it's been. It's been that way. Like I said, I, I, I've been doing my last couple fights, all title fights. You know, when you look at my opponents, uh, you know, they ain't got a lot of fights in the UFC, but these some of the toughest dudes. Like, you, you look around and ask who want to fight the Russian kid, who want to fight uh, Francisco Chinaldo. Nobody want to fight them dudes. I'm going down there, I'm taking the tough fights, and I'm preparing for a light, light day championship fight anyway. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, like, people want to, you know, people keep asking me, like, don't ask me shit about McGregor. Like, he don't, if, if anything, he can work his way back up to me. As far as I'm concerned, the man has one fight in the decision, and it's against Eddie Alvarez. Eddie Alvarez is walking around here like a little bitch, he'll do. So, uh, I really don't give him much respect for that. So if you don't want to, if you want to take a, a, a tune-up fight, if you want to fight Nate Diaz next, 
you can go ahead and do what you gonna, gonna do. I mean, make your money, baby. So uh, I'm gonna make mine, and I ain't so uh, I'm gonna make mine, and I ain't really worried about it. All right, understood. Um, one question for Demetrius. Uh, obviously, you know there were a lot of questions going into UFC 215 about Ray Borg making way, and the fight was called out for one reason or the other. Now, were there any second thoughts about fighting Borg on the UFC 215 card for you? No, not at all. You know, I'm, I'm happy the UFC got it uh, rescheduled super fast, and uh, you know, I'm still worried about myself. All right. So, one last question for Ray. Um, Ray, you talked about falling ill due to a flu bug in your camp the last time around, and that being uh, compounded due to the weather change in Canada. Now, with 216 approaching, what changes have you made to ensure that you'd be 100% healthy going into the fight camp this time around? Um, I don't know. Maybe just staying healthy. I mean, there's sometimes you just can't, you can't, you know, put up the inevitable. And you know, everyone at my camp was sick. My wife was sick, and you know, I was just banking on, you know, not catching it, but, you know, it, it happened. There's not a whole lot you can do, you know, but been taking my proper vitamins, been taking care of myself is the only thing. I mean, how, but you can't really stop a sickness, so, you know, just been kind of just trucking along and doing the same shit. All right, if I can just add one more thing. You said you're not uh, taking the services of a nutritionist this, this time around. So how has the entire process been for you for this particular camp as compared to the other times? Um... How's this camp gone because I'm not working with the nutritionist? Yes. Uh, same as, you know, my fights prior. I never had a problem making weight, you know, to begin with. And, uh, you know, I tried to add on a nutritionist to help me out just because I was getting a little bit older. The weight was getting a little bit tougher to cut. But, you know, I just went back to doing the same shit that got me to the show. And, you know, I'm, I'm not working with anybody this time around just because, I mean... One thing people don't understand is that it wasn't a weight issue. You know, I was just legitimately sick. If it was a weight issue... Then when Dana had his doctors come down to check me out, they would have told him it was a weight cutting issue, but the doctor did not clear me to fight because I was actually sick. So, I mean, in this sense, there isn't much of a point for a nutritionist because I didn't come home and blow up 10 pounds and, you know, eat burgers all day. All I did was I come, I came home, you know, rested, made sure I was, you know, eating the right foods to make sure I was feeling better. And, you know, my weight was never a problem to begin with. So, you know, my weight pretty much just stayed the same and, it's not going to be an issue at all, like, you know, in future fights, whatever, this weekend, next weekend, whatever. So, you know, it's, it's just been the same thing I've done for years and years and years. I never had a nutritionist leading up to the UFC, getting into the UFC, never had a nutritionist the first few fights. So, you know, it's just uh, doing things my own. I, I know my body more than any nutritionist ever will. So it's just deciding to do things by myself and how I used to do them. All right, understood. Thank you, guys. appreciate the time. Next question comes from Jeffrey Harris, 411 Mania MMA. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, first question uh, for Demetrius Johnson. Uh, would you say Ray Borg still deserves this title shot in light of what happened at uh, UFC 215? And do you think it maybe would have been better for you to wait to maybe fight the winner of uh, Sergio Pettis uh, versus Henry Cejudo? No, 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 I think he still deserves it. I mean, guys, it's only been four weeks, you know. Nothing's changed. He got sick. It happens. It's happened multiple times in, in not just in this division, but other divisions. Um, you know, if I'm successful defending my belt next week, then, you know, I'll be able to fight the winner of Sergio Pettis and Henry Cejudo, so I see no different. Uh, for Ray, there were a lot of questions coming out of what happened with uh, UFC 215, and you did part ways uh, with the nutritionists you were uh, talking about a lot before the fight with uh, perfecting athletes. So why did you part ways uh, with your old uh, nutritionist if it was not a weight-cutting issue? You know, I'll go ahead and go on record and say this. Uh, the ladies at Perfecting Athletes are awesome ladies. Uh, they truly know what they're doing. They, you know, they made my weight cut in Brazil so easy that I didn't even believe them when they were on fight week, when they were telling me to do certain things. I didn't even believe them that it worked, but it worked, and they did an amazing job. Um, the reason for parting ways with perfecting athletes went, you know, a lot in more in depth than what people know, and it's something I really don't wish to discuss and something you're not going to get me to discuss. So, you know, it, it has nothing to do with the weight issue. It's a little bit more than that. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot more than that. It had nothing to do with the weight issue. It was more... It, it, it was different, and, you know, I, I really not wish to, you know, touch base on it right now. Maybe in the future you can pull it out of me, but not right now. But, Ray, are you positive that flyweight is the best place for you since, I mean, you are still just 24, 
and you have this weight twice in the past, are you sure 125 is where you want to stay for right now? Five is where you want to stay for right now. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it makes sense. I mean, I, in all in all honesty, I am only 24, and four years from now, five years from now, I don't know where my body's going to be. I don't know how my body's going to react. So I can't say for the future, but right now, it doesn't make sense because most fighters, you know, most bantamweights, I don't know, I know a lot of bantamweights that walk around like at 155 or, you know, above. Me just naturally, me not trying to cut weight, just naturally getting in shape, my body just gets down to 136, 137 easy. And that's pretty small for a bantamweight, if you ask me. So, you know, yeah, it does make sense for me to stay here right now. Okay, and next question uh, for Kevin Lee. Both you and Tony are actually, I would say, pretty strong submission specialists. How do you match up with uh, with, uh, with uh, 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 submission skills? And do you, do you expect the fight going to the ground to uh, in any type of grappling battles in this fight? Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's going to be like a... It's, it, the fight gonna take place everywhere, and uh, you know we got different styles. We just, even though we might even come from the same background, you know he, he believe a little bit different philosophy than I do. And I, and I'm a show. Uh, I think I bring. I think I'm the best grappler in, in, in MMA grappler that there is. You know I, I think I blend a lot of different styles together. You know he sticks with that ten planet kind of weird old style. Like I don't really, you know I've I've, 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 I've saw a lot. I got a lot of guys that they so emulate good. the style real well. And, uh, and and I'm gonna shut it down. So if you want to play that game, we can. It's, it's gonna be everywhere, though. It's gonna be from pillar to post. This is the real. I mean, this is the real fight in the lightweight division. It's gonna, it's gonna be gonna show when you from. when you look at our skill. Yeah, I mean, you, you want to do you want to do a whole lot of talking. Go ahead, go ahead. The floor is yours, but big boy. Go ahead. Uh -huh. And for Tony, what do you what do you think of uh, Kevin Lee in terms of his grappling and uh, his other fighting skills? He's got good grappling, but not as good as mine. He never did as well as I did in college. He never, uh, he's always been following my footsteps, man. He's always trying to, trying to do the same you thing. You crazy as hell. Nigga, you're 33. Like, where was you at 25? Like, come on, come on, let's talk here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where was you at 25? Most Tom Fake is the fakest dude I know. He talked his way up to get to a title fight. And he's not going to be able to talk his way out of that fucking cage. Once that door locked. Okay, uh, talk my way, but I got 11 UFC fights at 25. Well, so I don't see how talk. Where, 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 where does talk back. come in? That's cute, bro. Where, 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 where does talk. talk come in? You don't want to want to talk me. Where does talk? I'm just saying. I'm going to knock at, you down at, like that. I'm going to knock all you right, straight down right. like that. You're going gonna to get knocked out for some chin. I'm going to test that chin again. The way you shoot on me, I'm going to put your ass in snap down city and choke your ass off. You knocked down more than me. What are you talking about? Like, do you watch your own fight? Like, what are you talking about? You, you see yourself get finished by a jiu jitsu black belt? By ground? Sure, we're going to see. We're going to see. see. Gonna, you're, talking about some shit. you're talking about some shit for three years, like two, three years ago. If you think I'm the same man, especially when I was only 22, 23 at the time, I mean, if you think I'm the same person, then come here, man. You can't get surprised. You are the same uh, because You are the same fighter. Right, you sound we'll the exact see, same man. way. I've been watching you like. You know what's funny? You've been watching me like a hawk. I got you scared. Yeah, I've been watching all you motherfuckers, and you've been watching me, too. Uh, no, I haven't been watching you anything. You put my name in your I mouth. I know exactly what you're going to do. I studied you beforehand, man. I already knew exactly how to beat you when I stepped on foot on side Fox. I got you, and I've been doing the same thing for you. I've been studying your game. I've been studying all y'all games, and I know y'all been studying mine. The only difference between me and you is I don't put your name on it. Like, you won't put... My name and your mom. They're trying to make no, no, no. no. They're trying to make a star off of me. They're always trying to make stars off of me. But the one thing you've been watching we me since we fought. We fought on San Diego. We fought on the same party San Diego. Your mom was watching me. Writing checks. Your body can't cash. Your porcelain chin's gonna get tested again. You 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 knew that we was fighting on August first, and you were still trying to call out Khabib even then. You're looking for the easier fights even then. But you've been watching me since we fought on the same card in San Diego. Your coach ain't nobody, you, ain't nobody, nobody, dodging, nobody ain't doing nothing. The only thing is, I yeah, that's what it. I mean, hey, hey, hey I, I mean, mean, numbers don't lie. That's what you did. You ain't doing. You ain't doing. You ain't doing. I ran out of acid to kick. That's it. I said everybody, I was gonna finish the whole entire division. I had to settle for a fucking number seven. Okay. Uh, and you were still looking at fight to be, which you know is the easier fight. If you don't think that Khabib is the easier fight, then hey, I mean, come on, man. The easy fight, Chiesa, bro. Come on. Fight somebody real. Watch, watch, watch how I do it. All right, what are you talking about? Like I didn't, I accepted the fight before I even renegotiated my contract. So I don't know what you, I don't know what you're trying to say. 
That I'm backing away from the fight. I'm the one that's looking. I was the one pushing for the fight with you. You doing? You doing? You doing? You doing? Just wait. Just wait till you taste the leather of my jab. You're gonna fucking hit the ground so fucking fast. I'm gonna snag that neck. I'm gonna choke your ass out. Okay. And uh, last one for Tony. What do you think about uh, where Habib Nurmagomedov is right now? And do you think he still needs to prove himself? That that he's a piece of tiramisu over in Dagestan. That's what he's doing. He's having two for two Tuesdays. Wait, today's Thursday. It's four for Thursdays. Well, what I mean is, do you think he needs to prove himself in another fight and that he can make weight without any issues, considering uh, his last two issues, you know, the fight that he was scheduled to have with you and the other time he missed weight before in the UFC? I don't know. I don't really give two fucks about that, dude. He had his opportunity to fight with me, and uh, you know what? Instead, he had to settle. I had to settle for Kevin Lee. Now, this dude, I mean, respect him. I give him credit for stepping up to the plate, and I said he's got more heart than half of these dudes in the top five. But with that being said, I don't, I'm not Khabib. I will never try to be like Khabib. I'm glad I'm not even trying to even talk about Khabib because this dude's got issues, and he's worrying about me. He's pissed off at the fact that Kevin Lee and myself are going to be fighting for that belt. And he's not, he missed out on his opportunity. You can't be messing around like that. A fighter fights. Thank you, gentlemen, and good luck with your fights. Next question comes from Cal Dansby with ABC 13 Las Vegas. Hello, guys. Thanks for taking the time out. First question is for Demetrius. Demetrius, coming into this fight, a lot of people have been saying your names. A lot of people wanted to drop down to fight you from heavier weight classes. Do you feel like you have that bullseye on your back? Seems like it. <laughs> and with that being said, after this fight, are you looking to you know, welcome someone down to your division? Or do you... And try to take someone else's belt. To be honest with you, I'm just worried about this fight, get through this, and then I'll sit down with uh, the higher brass of the UFC and my management, and then we'll see what makes the most sense. All right, next question for Tony. Tony, looking forward, if you become champion, do you feel when? like when you become champion, do you buy into the hype of the whole red panty night scenario? We've seen other people wait around for the No, I don't understand that. I don't like red. I like blue. That's my color. But uh, red panty, green panty, don't fucking matter. Whoever they put in front of me, and my first manager told me, he's like, Tony, you make your money by winning. And that's Brock Lesnar's manager. That's Brian Stegman. He tells me, Tony, don't worry about anything else. Everything else is going to fall into place. And I kept that same attitude. I signed with the management. And I kept the same attitude. I'm not changing anytime soon. Except when they offer you Michael Johnson, you know, and then you back out, then you run away, then you just take the money and run. Away. Like I mean, come on, I, I hey, look, I always give Tony respect when they offer Michael Johnson. I will say Tony, Tony is tough, but you know, come on, come on. Look, look, as 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 a competitor, as a man, that dude was not going to be able to make 170 fucking pounds. Sure, sure. I don't care. I mean, you can get fucking fun. And you know what? I didn't see your ass stepping up. Okay. Yeah, no, I was down in Brazil at the time, and I actually tweeted, and I said, I, fucking I, I, to I, I, Vegas I, right now. I, I don't know if you remember, because you don't, I don't know. You, you, I don't know how you're you remember you working All but. I have to tell you is, look, money didn't make sense, dollars didn't make it right, but I got a fight, and your ass is going to go night-night. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's a good little nursery rhyme, but again... As a as a as a fighter and as a competitor, I had to take it away from you. You know, you should have stepped up. You should have took that fight with Mike. If it was me, and they would have always say, "Look, I know I was fucking bitch ass." Mike already knows. You know, you ask him straight up, and he'll tell you straight up. I've had conversations with Mike. Look, this is a what a should have could have. Boy, you're a kid. I'm gonna send you packing, bro. You're gonna go back. What a what a what a should have could have. What a should have could have. I know you bring up my age a lot. I just have a little bit of resentment there because you know.
So I let you go ahead and talk it. You say you talk so much, you're not even funny. You said about all this mic time. You think mic time's gonna save you? Get out of here. Kevin, right. next question is for you. Yeah. Uh, question is for you. Yeah. Um, how much do you put into rankings? And we've seen other champions. We've seen recently Cody Garbrandt. Uh, you guys have both talked about Conor McGregor just taking his first fight and winning a title in the division. Do you feel any pressure as, you know, Tony constantly talks about you being number seven and you not fighting anyone? Do you feel pressure because of that? Do you embrace that? Does it fuel you going into fights like this? Yeah, I mean, it don't really matter. Like, I don't see why even other fighters are putting, you know, them rankings, they don't matter. Y'all make the rankings. I don't give a fuck about them rankings. Uh, the only thing everybody in above this, in this division got on me is some is is some years, is some time. That's it. So uh, when you look at the rankings, they don't really matter. You look at some of these dudes that's in the top twenty five, top thirty. They tough enough. They they will beat any of the guys in the top five. So uh, you know they got Nate Diaz who's got ten, eleven losses in the top five. You know it don't make sense. They got Justin Gaethje who only got one fight against. You know apparently beating Mike Johnson in this game is really something because. You got Khabib up there at number one, and, and the men don't fight. You know, you got you got Gates with one fight up uh, up above me. I mean, the Rangers don't really need shit. So you can say I'm number seven. You can say whatever you want to say. Like, I, I say I'm number one, and this going to prove up in, uh, on, on October 7th. Last question, and it's for both of you guys. Um, Tony, you can answer it first. Will you guys be watching that Gates fight versus Alvarez? And do you guys consider that a number one contender fight for you know, when you walk out with the belt? I, I watch play. every fight. Uh, I study everybody in the division. Uh, you know, I'm going to watch that fight, but again, they're they going to beat each other into retirement. You know, they both out there slurring their words already. So, uh, am I really looking forward to that fight? Not, I mean, a little bit, but not really. Uh, Eddie, Eddie's been around here in Las Vegas for a little bit. He's been kind of giving me props. He, been, uh, he wanted to shine my shoes the other day, so maybe... Eddie will come out on top and I'll give him a chance, but I, I just, I, I, I got to see more out of Gates before I get really get excited about it. I like the challenges. Tony Ferguson was a big challenge. Uh, nobody's been able to figure out that style and, and, and that rhythm, and, and, and the man's got a lot of heart. So I like the big challenges. Uh, as far as Eddie and, and Justin, they're not really big challenges. You know, so I, I don't know. Maybe after that fight, they'll prove something. Go ahead. You can answer, Tony. I didn't know they were fighting. I didn't give two fucks. The only thing I worry about is you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Next question Next. comes from Rodney James Edgar with MMA Latest News. Hey, good afternoon, y'all. This is Rodney James with MMA Latest News. First question is for Jack. Uh, what's up, Mighty Mouth? How you doing, buddy? There's been a lot of uh, there's been a lot of discussion about you know your your promotion. That conversation has come from all angles, from the media, the fans, from the UFC. Um, how how well do you think the UFC did in promoting your main event at UFC 215? Uh, you know, that's you know 215 behind us now. Um, I thought they did a good job. I mean, they built that card basically around us. We were sold out crowd, uh, and I, I mean I did all my media obligations. Went to Edmonton, did all that stuff. Um, now, you know, with us being on UFC 216, been seeing a lot of commercials, uh, and they've been hyping it up. So even though we're not the main event, I feel uh, their engagement in this fight is, is still good. Okay, and that answers my next question. I was going to say the same about 216. Uh, thank you, champ. Uh, Ray Borg, uh, so we've, we've heard you speak very few times since 215 was canceled. On this call, you've mentioned a few times that you were sick. Can you actually tell us what the diagnosis was? I've never heard that. What was the diagnosis for your illness? Uh, the diagnosis? I don't fucking know. I'm not a doctor. He just told me that I had a flu virus and that was it. I mean, I was throwing up. I was, you know, I, I had the shakes. I had the shivers. And it wasn't like no weight cutting type sickness. I just got the flu and that was it. I mean, I'm not a doctor, so I can't really diagnose it. I mean, you can call me well, a doctor. You did. You did. That, that's what I was looking for. Um, so who was the final decision authority? You said they didn't clear you to fight. The, the doctors had the final decision authority. Yeah, yeah. You know, we we were we were still trying to we were still cutting weight as I was sick. I mean, we were trying to make it to the fight. It wasn't me saying, "Oh, I'm sick. I don't feel good. You know, I can't fight. Someone please call a doctor." We were cutting weight, <clears throat> and then we got they got wind that I was sick. The UFC got wind that I was sick, and this goes like I said, this goes deeper than you know what you guys need to know. And the UFC doctors got one that I was sick. So Dana sent 
his doctor, I can't remember his doctor's name off the top of my head, but he was flown into Canada. He came into the room. He checked me out. He, you know, did his whole doctor examination shit and deemed me unfit to fight. So, you know, it was his call, not mine. Okay, thank you, Red. Okay, thank you, Red. All right, next question is for uh, Elk Kuhn from Ferguson. Um, the initial clash between you and Kevin Lee that took place live on air, um, uh, immediately following uh, Kiefta versus Lee, um, you showed a little bit of reluctance to fight him. I don't mean because, you know, you were afraid of him or anything like that, but because of his ranking, you said that he was, you know, a little bit too far on the rankings need to get some more wins in order to step up to your level. But then shortly after that, this fight was made. So what changed? Because that's a pretty drastic change. Khabib's bitch ass didn't want to show up, so we had to figure out something. My shelf life is great. I might be 33, but I can move quicker than Kevin Lee could ever move. And uh, he was the only one that wanted to sign a dotted line, so now we got to fight. Okay, good answer. So uh, I see that you've been training at the Big Bear. Uh, that's, that's kind of your go-to. Uh, what's it been like up there? And what's the weather like? Uh, tell us what it's like Fucking training. It's cold. It's cold. It's dark. I'm running with the bears and the coyotes, and I'm a fucking road runner, man. I've been out there literally climbing thousands and thousands of feet every single day with 50-pound packs. And once I get to the top, I'm doing mitts, and I'm flipping boulders, and I'm carrying this shit. I'm being a Neanderthal, man. I'm a mountain man right now. So any of all this bougie shit that's going to try to bring me down, I'm putting it to the side. And I just can't wait till next week I get my hands on this kid. Okay, thanks. And uh, last question is for the Motown Queen. I'm Kevin Lee. Um, you stated uh, earlier when we spoke here at the UFC Performance Institute uh, during the media day there that uh, you wanted to fight Khabib. You also said that you don't think uh, McGregor will be willing to fight by December, even though he, he claims that he will. Dana White also said that. Um, so do you still see Khabib as, as your next uh, most likely opponent? Uh, I've been willing to fight Khabib just because he would have been an easy, just because he an easy fight. You know, that, that, that's the name of the game. The most amount of money for the easiest fight. I've been calling his ass out for, you know, over a year. He's going to keep downplaying me. All these dudes going to keep downplaying me. I mean, that, 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 that was the whole thing started with me and Tony. You know, when, when, when they try to downplay me, it's like, all right, it, it's cool, but we'll, we'll see in October 7th. So, yeah, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to talk my way into the next fight, too. And and the word I'm going to say is yes. When they call me and they want me to fight, I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to say yes to, yes to the toughest challenges. If that's going to be, you know, a lot of people think that he's the number one contender for some reason. So uh, I like that challenge. I, I, I like to go out there and shut him down, especially if he's still defeated. Thanks. And uh, speaking of the UFC Performance Institute, that's a very new facility, um, and I see that fighters like you and some of your teammates that experience the tour like Brad Tavares have been taking advantage of, of using that facility. Can you tell us a little bit about that? It looks pretty amazing. Yeah, I'm here right now. Uh, I just got done doing a little bit of, you know, we find so many things. The hard work is already done. Uh, so I'm, I'm here. I'm walking around. I've been walking around this bitch like I own it. So uh, I've been here, you know, I've been walking around here on my paws every day. I'm, I'm here more than the staff is. So, it, you know, it's amazing. It's open pretty much all day for me. I stay until after the staff leaves. Uh, and, and, and I'm here all night. So I look, it ain't no better place in the world to train. You know, it's got everything that you can need. Um, so I'm taking full advantage of it, and I told them when they when they first opened it that I was. All right, thanks, Kevin. All right. Our final question comes from Nicholas Peralta with MMAWreckage.com. How you doing? Um, thank you guys for uh, taking the call. I appreciate it. Uh, Demetrius Johnson, my first question is for you. Um, there was a little bit of controversy following UFC 215. I know uh, you probably are tired of getting these questions about it, but um, you, you never actually uh, were able to iterate whether or not you actually paid your show money for UFC 215, were you? Um, I was not. We worked it out. Uh, first time management uh, took care of me and sort of the UFC, so they got the fight scheduled within four weeks. And typically, you know, in the past, if a fighter, you know, doesn't make weight, like, you know, don't, don't throw any habit to him. I think it's Tony Ferguson, it happened to him, where if he didn't make weight, but even though uh, Tony Ferguson made weight, you know, his fight wasn't being rescheduled so quick. So with this fight only being four weeks different, you know, there is no, there's like a, a rule that they have. So to answer your question, no, they fixed they we're, we're, we're fighting next Saturday. And was there a contingency plan for this fight in case Borg or so, for whatever reason, were unable to make it to this fight but next Saturday? Or if Borg was unable to make weight? No. 
And uh, Ray Borg, a uh, question for you. If um, the worst should happen and you are unable to make weight, what would be the end result for you? If I show up and I don't make weight, what's the end result? Yeah, well, for you, personally. You, personally. Um, for, for me, I mean, I, I, first of all, I don't see that happening, so it's hard to even imagine what would happen, but I mean, I guess if I'm going to, you know, play the what if game, I imagine they would make me move up to 35. I mean, but that's not going to happen. I'm not going to miss weight. So it's hard to really think about what would happen. But if we're playing the what if game, then, you know, what if I miss weight, what, you know, whatever, then I imagine I'll have to move up to 35. And what would it mean for you to win the flyweight championship next Saturday, given all the controversy that it has surrounded you? Um, it would, I mean, it would obviously feel good, but I mean, it doesn't change just because there's a lot of controversy since UFC 215. It, it nothing has changed in my mind. My mind is still to go out there and and win that belt. You know, there's there's nothing else that's going to change just because you know some shit happened between now and then. Doesn't mean I'm going to have a different approach and try to go in there to prove all these Twitter fans and all these haters wrong. I'm going in there for myself. I always fight for myself and for my family, not for the fans. You know. For no, I fight for myself. You know, if the fans like what they see, then great. You know, that's uh, that's a plus for me. But I'm going out there for me, so nothing has changed between now and then. Thanks, Morgan. And for Kevin Lee, uh, quick question: What was the extent of your relationship with Ferguson during your time at Grand Valley State University? Uh, I mean, we didn't really have much of a relationship. You know, I just knew about the guy, and you know. Kind of like I said, I always gave him respect even before I, you know, really knew him. And then, you know, he he he, he don't want to retaliate. So I'm 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 gonna get my respect. Uh, when when I knock him down, when it, when I hurt him, uh, then, then after the fight, he's gonna shake my hand and he gonna and he gonna give me the respect. So uh, I mean, it wasn't really much of a relationship. I you know, only wrote for a couple of years. I, I was more so. Uh, I mean, that's where our styles differ in the first place. I was more so. I was already fighting as I was wrestling at the same time. You know, I was I was fighting as an amateur. Uh, I was fighting as a pro my second, my sophomore year, and then I stopped after that because I'm I, I was I had bigger goals and bigger dreams uh, than just being you know 24 and being a, a, a you know national champ of a bum ass school like him or whatever you want to say. All right, <laughs> uh, and my last question is for Ferguson. Ferguson, you haven't been able to fight in uh, in about a year based on uh, you know Khabib not being able to fight earlier this year. Has that at all? Um, hindered you or do you feel like the the time off has been uh, uh any bit of a blessing no absolutely i had a 10 month camp for this guy <laughs> this bitch is in trouble <laughs> all right awesome thank you yeah that makes that makes total sense sure thank you ladies and gentlemen <laughs> i would now like to turn the conference back over to dave lockett for closing remarks I'd like to thank everyone for participating in today's conference call. Uh, just a reminder for next week, UFC 216 Ultimate Media Day will take place uh, next